K chapter 16, patient education. One of the biggest jobs we have is education. So if you didn't want to be a teacher, nursing is probably not for you. Because <laughs> that's all we do is teach all day. Teach the patient, teach their family, teach each other, teach the community. A lot of work goes into patient education to keep them out of the hospital and keep them from returning to the hospital. So this is the fun chapter for me. Um, again, the disclosure statement, I don't own this material under fair use. I'm providing lecture content only for my nursing students. Using this material, all content within is only for educational purposes for nursing students and does not provide medical advice. So teaching skills in nursing practice, the American Nurses Association says that nurses are to promote health demands um, skill in teaching clients. So that's why we are teaching so much to help promote health. The Joint Commission says to provide education based on the patient's assessed needs is a requirement of the Joint Commission hospitals. And the American Hospital Association's Patient Care Partnership says that patients have a right to make informed decisions about health care. Many times the patient does not make an informed decision because they do not have the risks and the benefits the good and the bad and the ugly about different decisions that they're making. So it's always our goal as nurses to make sure that they have all the information they need to make an informed decision before they withdraw or continue with care. So why is patient education so important? It empowers the patient to take control of their own health care. It helps improve patient compliance because if they understand the why, they'll probably do what you're asking them to do. It reduces health complications in hospital readmission. It improves patient satisfaction. And it also, <laughs> obviously, that would increase our role satisfaction. If people listened to us and they got better and they didn't come back, that would be great. That's our overall goal. So on this slide, to think about the way that you're teaching. So with the three domains of learning, you always have to think like storage and recall. So if you're going to give them facts about a disease, this is the same um, Bloom's taxonomy as we use with you guys. So the very lowest level is remembering. Remembering is memorizing, recalling, delivering back on a test, verbal recognition of what I need to do, okay? Very, very low level thought process here. What was your blood sugar? 63, okay, yay. It doesn't mean anything, right? Understanding means that you understand, you summarize and inform or interpret that data understanding would be i'm 63 today i was 64 yesterday i'm on the gaming side i'm losing weight i'm doing great okay so understanding and then applying which means abstract ideas implementing the plan implementing the plan oh i'm 63 today yesterday i was 64. so i analyze and apply that i am doing a good job and i'll continue to lose weight if i keep doing this analyzing analyzing breaking it down identifying relationships so kind of like applying but applying is just okay this is working analyzing means oh so if I keep doing this, I'll get better. Analyze means it's getting better or gets getting worse. You're judging it, analyzing it. Um, the next one up is that judging, evaluating, assessing the value of, applying criteria or standards to. So I know my BMI needs to be 22 then I'm evaluating, I'm judging that I'm going in the right direction. Stressing the value of applying criteria or standards. Now I've got this BMI of 22, which is a standard 
that I'm trying to get to. Okay. And then lastly is creating or designing, constructing, and inventing. So this would be, oh, my weight's down. I bet if I just cut out a little more of the water, replace the water, replace the sodas with water, I bet I could get down there even faster if I took away more calories. Okay. So I'm creating a new plan. Okay. So you can apply this to anything. You know that in nursing school, we are not going to keep you down here, right? There are some things you're just going to have to remember for the test. Lab values. Understanding means I understand that lab value. Is it getting better or worse, right? So you can see this in almost anything. So creating would be like designing a plan to get that potassium down. So what level of the question are you doing on the test? That's the question. Do you think they're just asking you simply to remember? Some of those stupidly simple questions that you think, oh no, what? this must be a trick. They're not. They're just at the remembering stage of learning. So we know that some test questions are going to be down here, and that's why they sound stupidly simple. Putting up the side rail might be stupidly simple, but if you can't remember that, we're going to have a patient fall. Okay? So we want you way up here before you graduate so that you're evaluating, you're analyzing, you're taking into consideration all the data points that you're getting from your patient. Okay, it's when you create that nursing care plan from scratch, all in your head, that you know that you're getting to that point where you're probably ready to graduate at this point because you're able to put it together, understand it, apply it, analyze it, evaluate it, and then create a new plan based on what you've seen. Okay, so this is huge in education. It's like the crux of everything we do in nursing education. So the three domains of nursing is psychomotor. So that's the hands-on, the doing. So if your patient needed um, self-administration of insulin, you would take the syringe, you would tell them about the syringe, you would tell them about their insulins, they would pull up the insulin in the syringe. It's a hands-on skill. So the psychomotor part of this class is up in the skills lab. It's when you're actually doing. Effective is about changing feelings, beliefs, attitudes, and values. So effective, just think it affects me and I'm going to change my affect about it. My yay or I hate this. I can't be diuretic. Right? So affect means your attitude, your beliefs, your values around what you have to do. Okay, so when you become diabetic for the first time, obviously there's a lot of fear and anger. Eventually you identify that, oh, some things are going to have to change, but this isn't a life sentence. Okay. So some theories of learning that are out there that we all learn as nurse educators and it's drilled in our heads. You guys also need to know that because that's what tells you how to get them to learn. So social learning, if I put a group in a class together, wound care class, they're all learning together. So it's less scary. So you know this, this happens a lot at the hospitals. It's the joint club. It's a pre-op education club for whatever pre-op they're going in for. And it's usually hips and joints, knee replacements, hip replacements, bariatric surgery. You put them in a group and you do the education once to provide bigger bang for your buck. If you pay somebody $40 an hour, it's better if there's six people in the room than one. So social learning happens when there's people together talking. It's social environment when they're learning. Behavioral learning basically means the behavior I want to see them do. So literally taking the syringe and pulling up 10 units of insulin. It's behavioral. The behaviors that I need to see to know that they're competent. 
Cognitive means brains, so the thinking process. So if your blood sugar was 263, show me on the sliding scale how much insulin you would be giving yourself. And we'll talk about this and it'll make more sense when you get there. But the cognitive is the thought process. If my blood sugar is 70, do I really want to give that insulin to myself today? No. I want to eat, then I'll do it, right? Because the insulin is going to cause my blood sugar to drop. Humanism, making the human aspect of it, right? So bring it down to the human level. Make it very low-lying. This happens. It's not a problem. So humanism, it's a lot easier if you see others. It's kind of in the social learning realm as well. So it helps when you can learn from another person than a computer screen. And then the five rights of teaching, just consider when you are trying to teach, is it the right time? If the mom pushed for six hours to get this baby out, right now is not the time to teach her about diaper care. Just do the diaper yourself, okay? So you have to know, is it the right time in the right context? Do you have the right goal? Do you have the right content? And do you have the right method? If somebody tells you they're a verbal learner, don't bring them a bunch of pamphlets. They said verbal, which means verbally tell me. If I said reading, sight, then that's what you would do. If I saw auditory, then you would tell me or show me, okay? Kinesthetic means touch. So I want to touch the syringe. I want to do the syringe. I want to do it myself, okay? So there's a, the right time, the right context, and the right goal in anything that we teach. It has to be at the right time for them to be able to take it in. Some factors that, a client, that affect client learning. So the motivation. So where's the motivation for them to want to shoot their, their arm or their belly to get better, to not lose a leg, whatever motivation it is. So you need to address their motivation level, their readiness to learn. Their readiness to learn might be a physical condition. If they're blind, are they ready to learn right now? Not if I'm trying to show them something, okay? So that readiness to learn, is it the right time emotionally for them? Under distress is not the time to go try to teach somebody something, right? So just like I said, when the mom is excited, she just had the baby, now she's ready to crash. Don't try to go teach at that time. The timing of it, the active involvement, so if you say, let's do this to you versus let's do this with you, a big difference. They need to be actively involved. Feedback has to be given. So you have to tell them, oh, you're doing such a good job. Good job, good job, good job. You're doing such a good job. So constantly giving them feedback. Feedback good, feedback bad, right? So just like us in the skills lab, we'll say almost, hold on. Let me show you a different way. It's not bad. It's just we're giving you feedback so that you know how to do it more appropriately. Repetition. So just like in the skills lab, I cannot tell you enough. People learn very late on, week 9, 10, 11, that if they had only spent an hour in the sim lab, open lab, doing this skill, they would be a lot more proficient in it. So don't think you've done this skill a million times, you know how to do it. Go practice first. Go practice in open lab. And then being in the right learning environment. If I tell you, okay, I don't have any syringes today, but let's practice on a syringe here in the air. That's not the right learning environment. I really need to take you upstairs where I have needles, syringes, insulin, and talk to you about that. Okay. So always remember these things that can affect your client's um, learning. Um, 
also, you know, under the physical condition is eyes, ears, those things as well. So just make sure that they have their hearing aids, they have their glasses, that they're ready to learn when you teach. Otherwise, you're wasting time and energy in trying to get this person ready. So a big thing that comes up is um, smoking cessation. If I, I literally can do this in two seconds. What I say is, how motivated are you to want to change your smoking behavior? No, I'm not. Then I'm going to leave a pamphlet and walk away, right? I've done provided education. He's not receptive to learning right now. The brochure's there. If he's ready, he will call us and we can talk to him then. Okay, so some things you just give them a brochure. It's not the right time. They're not actively involved. It's okay to educate that way. Just let them know when you're ready. I'm here for you and I'm ready to talk to you about it. Okay, so don't push it on them. So some of the other things is the scheduling in the session. If they say my wife's going to be here at one o'clock, then wait till one o'clock. They're trying to ask you. Can we wait a little bit till my wife gets here? The amount and the complexity of the content, it may take multiple days to get an insulin dependent diabetic to give themselves the insulin correctly. Nurse client communication, special populations, developmental stage, culture, and health literacy. Consider if the patient only speaks Spanish, you're going to have to have the interpreter. If they're a four-year-old versus an eight-year-old versus a 12-year-old versus a 22-year-old, if they are mentally slower, the developmental level is not there. You would just bring the teaching back down to the level that they're at. Their culture may also affect learning, so they may not actually look you in the eye and shake their head yes and respond. Um, in some cultures, especially Native American, they revere nurses and doctors just like God, pretty God they like. So they're not going to look you in the eye. Don't expect them to. But you would see it in their behavior, in their actions. At the end of the day, we should be able to see these people being able to take care of themselves, to be able to let them go home. Okay? You're not always going to get a verbal or a physical sign that they're listening and that they're paying attention, but they should be able to do what you're asking them to. The health literacy, again, if you know that the patient has a literacy level of third grade, you're not going to bring Medscape.com's article. Okay, so keep the education to the level of the learner. We typically say that sixth grade reading level. Barrier to teaching and learning. For the patient, what are the barriers? Time. It takes a lot of time. The barriers to teaching and learning for the patient. Exhaustion. Pain. Not having my hearing aids. Not having my glasses. Might really affect my teaching and my learning. Technology-based learning. If I don't have a computer, don't tell me to look it up online. Okay. If you're not familiar with technology, it may really hinder you as well. So suppose you're the nurse planning discharge teaching for a frail elderly man who suffered a stroke. He will be cared for by home, at home by his daughter. What is the best approach for planning discharge teaching? How might the nurse show caring for this patient? Run it through your head. Offer some suggestions. Frail elderly man suffered a stroke. I really have more questions than answers. I want to know, can, does he have aphasia? Can he, can he listen and understand what I'm saying? Does he have expressive aphasia? That he's not going to tell me, yes, he understands. Does he have receptive aphasia that he doesn't understand the words that I'm saying? Right? So I have a lot of assessment to do before I can do much, but the best approach for me is to teach his daughter with him. I never want to just teach the daughter because that's negating that we have a patient in the middle. Okay. 
So whenever you have an interpreter or a sign language interpreter or language interpreter, you always speak to the patient still, not to the interpreter. Okay, so don't look at the interpreter, look at the patient when you're speaking. And then how the nurse might show caring for this patient by having the daughter there. It shows that you care because you understand what this patient's going to go through and that he's going to rely on this daughter at home. So safe and effective care promotes safe self-care. It shortens hospital stays. It reduces errors and medical complications and prevents rehospitalization. So the better job you do on the pre-work of teaching, the more payoff you get. A lot of times patients will come back and say, I didn't know, no one told me that. I didn't realize that, okay? So if you want a good video about that, look up House MD asthma video. Okay, a quicker check. Nurses must possess knowledge and skills needed for patient teaching so that, A, they can complete the documentation forms related to teaching accurately, B, they can help the hospital meet the Joint Commission standards requiring client education. C, they can promote health, safety, and rights of ed clients through education. Or D, they can meet the patient's rights delineated by the patient care partnership. What do you think is most important here? Is it about forms? Is it about the Joint Commission? Or is it about the patient? So the ANA Code of Ethics uh, for Nurses holds that nurses are responsible for promoting and protecting health, safety, and rights of patients. Patient teaching is essential in fulfilling that responsibility. So the health and safety and rights of clients through education. So remember that when you get to ethics class. Okay, clicker check two. The client needs to be taught how to find and check their own radial pulse. The nurse will complete this teaching. Okay, so one, what do I know right away? Find and check their radial pulse. That's a tactile sense. So how would I teach them that? And I want to check that they know it, right? So I just don't want to just teach it to them. I want them to teach me back how to do it. So A, only if the client asks the nurse to do so to avoid causing stress. B, the client recognizes the need to learn the skill, plausible, before pain medicine is administered when the client is alert. I'm not happy with that. Right before the patient is discharged so they can remember the skill. How am I going to know they know how to do it if I'm teaching it right before discharge? I don't have a chance to evaluate their learning. So B, when he is motivated to learn. If he's in pain, he's not going to be motivated to learn. He just wants his pain pills. Okay? Can you see how that went? So the, the client needs to be taught. So that gets rid of this one. How to find and check their own radio pulse. That's a technical skill that we go to school for. So it's not something that just people on the street know how to do. So I definitely want to make sure that he's open to that learning. So components of a learning assessment. One of the biggest things that we do in nursing is do nursing assessments. And the biggest one is your, your education provided to the patient. So that needs to be documented really well. So the form or the chart will have places that you have to fill in things like the intended audience. You always want to know your audience and their learning needs. Okay. So just like ADPI, okay. I want you to bring this back and just look at this. This is ADPI already again, okay? Assessment, diagnosis, planning, intervening, and then evaluating. ADPI will get you a lot of places. 